yeah, so we have a government that has uh, a federal government that has done little to nothing, uh, har- you know, basically given up at controlling this thing. Um, you, I mean, I don't want to rehash all the excuses that were made. First, it was a hoax. Then it was just going to go away. Um, and then it was no big deal. And then it was going to go away again. And then it became the cure can't be better or can't be worse than the than the virus, saying we should reopen the economy. And, uh, you know, of course, not wearing a mask, he got infected himself. Um, but uh, I live in California. And one of the things about being a Californian during all of this is uh, the hatred and the anger and the absolutely petulant mewling about Governor Gavin Newsom. Uh, we were the first state to do a stay-at-home order. And now we're looking at... Yeah, we're, we are glad you're doing okay, Jay. Th- yeah, thanks for sharing that with us, man. Hang in there. Jeez. I hope you, yeah, d- be careful. Don't get it again. It can, it can be worse the second time around. Um, but so uh, people are, uh, you know, f- freaking out and flying off the handle and getting California. Why? Because we've entered lockdown part two. Part two because we couldn't do it right the first time it's worth reminding people we didn't really have a lockdown last time we had a partial lockdown other countries did a much more widespread stringent lockdown countries like germany were paying people to stay home and yes germany's dealing with its own yahoos anti-mask anti-lockdown yahoos as well it's a problem don't get me wrong Um, but now in california we have this regional lockdown situation as you can see um and uh, it, you know, it splits the states into these sectors and stay at home orders uh, go into effect when hospital capacity reaches a certain point. OK, um, now I'm in located right here in northern Santa Barbara County and then up above us, we have Slow County and we are included as part of Southern California. So these people over here are way more mad about being <laughs> included in Southern California. Um but, uh, you know, Southern California, L.A., San Diego, County, all these areas. Um, and then you have us here, Santa Barbara County, Slow County. And people in our area have gotten – we're in lockdown now. We're supposed to be in full lockdown. And people here have gotten super upset um, that uh, we were included in these portions of the state. Um, really quick, we have some funny comments here. Uh, it'll be over in a week. Uh, you know, the half caps, half undercase uh, Valor. It'll be over after the election. Yeah, pretty good stuff, guys. Um, um, it's 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 insane. So our counties have been included in the uh, stay-at-home order because of um, because we're in the sector of Southern California. People have been upset about this. They've complained. One of those is our local assembly state assembly member who just got reelected, Jordan Cunningham. Cunningham released a statement on Newsom's most recent stay-at-home order. And he's uh, he's a Republican, and he's reflecting what a lot of uh, the right has said and continues to say uh, now, and now just that the lockdown orders are regional. They're saying, it's not affecting us like it's affecting everyone else. Um, today, Assembly Member Cunningham released the following statement, blah, 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 we're getting Newsom's stay-at-home order. Governor's most recent order, which will lead to a lockdown of San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties, is arbitrary, irrational, and bordering on punitive. Oh, you're being mean to us, Gavin Newsom. You're being so mean. We cannot be shutting down local businesses, many of which have spent tens of thousands of dollars to retrofit their operation in order to comply with yesterday's public health orders. What? Because of limited ICU capacity in counties hundreds of miles away from our community. There is no science-based rational reason to group the central coasts and counties with Los Angeles, Imperial, Riverside, or San Bernardino counties. His Southern California region is 20 million people and 350 miles north to the south, or north to south. Okay. Um, You know what's funny about this is part of why our counties are included uh, in those areas, uh, in the Southern uh, California areas, guess who gets to deal with the overflow once the hospitals reach capacity down south? It's us. Um, and crazy enough is just days after this, uh, or like the next day after he released the statement, Cunningham slow County, which had thought it's crap did not smell this whole time. And that it just had hardly any coronavirus cases, uh, reported 360 something cases in one day, 
that's a lot for uh, a county with the population of Stoke County. And a lot of people in Stoke County have been super cavalier. Um, Paso Robles, uh, you know, very red. A lot of Trump flags up in Paso Robles. They are like the hot spot. Here in Santa Barbara County, um, these are the numbers from yesterday. 172 new cases in Santa Barbara County. Um, 116 are still infectious. 64 cases hospitalized and 12 are in the ICU. Um, and a death, okay? You know, uh, really, really not, I mean, really bad. These are the, the kind of infographs that they release. You can see a lot of, the, most of the cases are in the middle age range. But look, older people are getting it a lot too. Um, yeah, ICU availability. So the region of California, 7.7. Uh, we're a bit better. We're 38.5. Um, so that's not, uh, that, you know, that's not, that's not that great people. It's not, that's not the best. Um, and here we see, let's see here. Um, this is by area. So again, Santa Maria, look at this. This is our hot spot. Santa Maria, Cal we're the most populous, densely populated area between Ventura and Salinas. Here we see, we are getting the majority of the cases and Lompoc again, more populated, they had 28 new cases. Santa Barbara, 28. Um, unincorporated areas. Unincorporated South County, 5. Um, and then this is from today. 59 new cases today. Um, we, we now have 13 cases in the ICU. So it's not getting much better. Now, what do you think uh, the logical uh, thing to do in this situation is? Well, according to this, uh, the Solvang City Council, Solvang, a small tourist town, is refusing to comply with California's shutdown. It may not be the only one. Um, so if you guys aren't familiar with Solvang, it's this little Dutch storybook village. In, uh, you know, it's, it's in the middle of our county. It's over the mountain range from Santa Barbara. Um, Santa Barbara is well-known. Montecito is well-known for having a bunch of rich people living there. But Montecito, uh, sorry, Solvang also has celebrities living there. David Crosby, you know, Crosby stills and Nash. He's quite Twitter active. Hey, uh, David Crosby, I said hi to you that one time at uh, Bob's Wellbred in Los Alamos. Um, yeah, he lives there. Uh, Bo Derek lives out there. Uh, uh, Neverland Ranch is out there uh, in the San Ynez Valley. But Solving's right smack dab in the middle. It's this little storybook Danish village. They built windmills, and it's a, it's a tourist destination. Um, on Sunday at midnight, California Gavin Newsom's stay-at-home order went into effect for the greater Southern California region. The order shuttered all in-person dining, closed hotels to everyone but essential workers, and further reduced capacity in retail establishments. Breweries and wineries were closed to all but retail sales. But the small tourist town of Solvang is refusing to comply, even as the pandemic surges. Can you believe this? Um, so the, the, the Solvang... Uh, well, let's just continue. On Monday, Solvang Mayor Ryan Toussaint filed an emergency motion in a Solvang City Council meeting that the town would not comply with the order. It passed 5-0. to zero. As of tonight, they can go about their business as they have done this weekend, said Council Councilman Daniel Johnson. While restaurants are still adhering to safety protocols and limiting capacity, they are continuing to allow outdoor dining. Significant concerns about the latest round of business shutdowns were expressed by residents, business, and representatives and our council, Toussaint wrote in a letter. On December 7th, the Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors. So they aren't even going to respect county orders. Um, the community of Solving has done a great job of being mindful, safe, and responsible while keeping our local economy going during these challenging times. The current order by the state is ill-conceived, unnecessary, and quite frankly negligent when it comes to protecting our community in a safe and balanced and sane manner. Now, to be clear, um, I think... The government should be doing more to support businesses. I think there should be a better stimulus bill through uh, the U.S. Congress. I think the state government should do more uh, for local business owners. All of that uh, preface to say the Solvang, uh, Solvang is a tourist town. It's known for being a tourist destination. Should we really be encouraging tourism at a time like this? The death count uh, just a few days ago was more than 3,000. It was close to 3,000 today. It was like two or 2,000 something or yesterday. We're literally having death on scale daily on the scale of 9-11 or Pearl Harbor. COVID-19 is now the leading cause of death in the United States. Above heart disease, our favorite 
way to die. That's probably how I'm going to go. So, the, you know, we are in the winter of our discontent. All the alarm bells should be going off and solving thinks it's more important for you to go get a pretzel uh, or uh, even the Chumash Casino. I mean, they're on sovereign native land. They can do whatever the hell they want. Obviously, they you know, they can defy state county orders. They're a sovereign nation. But I think they should close down, too, because it's not safe. It's not safe, people. And there's a reason why around the country deaths have skyrocketed, you know, in uh, states that are even worse than this one's. They're making decisions like allowing infected nurses to work and medical professionals to work while infected. This is disgusting. And, and frankly, Solvang is saying that, you know, th their city council is saying that they need to support their businesses more than public health. And to be frank, Solvang, the people who actually vote in the city of Solvang, it's a much older, uh, definitely much wider, but much more moneyed population. Uh, people with more money uh, own property in Solvang. It's a very expensive area to live. And the people in the service industry in Solvang, the people serving you your pretzel and your strudel and your, your pancakes or, or whatever other, uh, your wine tastings and your fine art gallery shows, um, the people in service there, mo most of them most likely do not live in Solvang. They're going to live... Uh, if these are people employed by small business owners, if you have a small business owner who is the only person working the counter for their wine tastings or whatever else, other than that, you're going to have a low wage person probably doesn't live in solving. I know pe I know a bunch of people commute from areas like Santa Maria and Lompoc, the more populous cities where it's a bit more affordable to live, um, definitely to own or rent. They are the ones who are, are going to face the brunt of all these tourists and whoever else coming in and possibly infecting them. Not because, because we can't be bothered to shut down during December, during flu season, during a pandemic. Um, very troubling. Uh, very sad. Uh, you know, when you see the numbers and you see our, our ICU capacity continues to go down um, and our death rate, we now have 140 deaths, just deaths just in our County. And 172 new cases in a day. I mean, that's uh, that's really troubling. See the the so on the 10th the capacity was at 38.5. Then on wow on uh, the very next day it's 31.9 in our county. That's ICU capacity. Uh, uh, sorry guys, I was I was showing this stuff. But let's go back to the chat and see. Um, let's see. Well, you guys are having a whole whole thing here. Jay Coleman, let me share with this with y'all too. Las Vegas tore down 26 homeless people's huts at an enclave here. Jesus. Yeah, we have problems with that too here, with the, the dehumanization of homeless people. Um, Valor, that's so freaking messed up. The time spent tearing down temporary structures could have been spent on so much better resources. Um, I'm sure you guys saw the photos uh, from Vegas. Um like when at the beginning of all this they were oh my god yeah here it is look at this guys this is this is really disgusting this is at the beginning of the crisis in las vegas they um they for the homeless they made these like weird if they, i don't know if they had coronavirus or if they were just trying to prevent them from getting it but they literally just have a it's parking lot. About the oh, tiny things. Sorry, it's an ad. Friends and folk. They had a parking lot. And they just have like squares. This isn't a game of four square or whatever. They, they have these social distancing squares. So the homeless can social distance and lay in these squares. And literally like, w you know, within uh, walking distance of the Las Vegas Strip, right? Where... They could have just given these people hotel rooms. They could have just put them. But no, can't do that. So Jay's talking about in the comments of how they tore down these homeless people's uh, structures, their, their camps. Activists had set up the perfect solution for these people, and the state had tore it down. It was an enclave in between a highway and a water wash. It kills me. 
Food Not Bombs Las Vegas did the work. Y'all follow them on social media. They're badass. Thanks, Jay. We will do that. That's Goodman's Death Camp at Cashman Center. Jeez. Ugh. We're living in a dystopia, people. This is what it looks like. I know it's not fun. It's not nice. 